Welcome to our World of Fiery videos, covering topics of everyday importance to print providers. Today we will demonstrate how to make ready a saddle stitch booklet on a Fiery digital front end. The first step covers what we should do as soon as we get a file from a customer. We use tools to identify and troubleshoot content issues and avoid surprises at print. Once we know the issues the file has, we'll move forward with correcting and editing the file with tools available at the DFE. Then, once we have all content elements in the pages, we continue with imposition and document assembly. That is to make decisions at a page level, merging pages, assigning media to covers, inserting scanned pages, adding tab separations, and so forth. The last step is to leverage from all the work we did previously and set up the base for automating future jobs. So future jobs can be set up in just a couple of clicks. And remember all these icons, we'll reference them throughout the entire session to help you understand what stage we are in the make ready process. So let's start here with our first order. And in this order, we see that we have a number of challenges. We want to ensure that uh, we have the highest quality output for our order. So image quality is going to be critical for this order. And we want to identify and make any changes then that we discover before we print this job without having the original native files. After we've made these changes, then we'll complete and assemble the document and get it ready for final customer sign-off using a number of the other tools, including hard copy page insertion, making a booklet, assigning cover stock, renumbering the pages, and then creating a PDF file then to send back to the customer for their final sign-off. When we complete this, then we'll show some automation. All right, so let's go ahead and start with our first. We're going to identify and tr troubleshoot. We're going to look at making sure that the image quality is maintained. And to do this, we're going to start with a pre-flight check to ensure the highest quality. We're also going to run then a post-flight report to make sure that we understand and identify all the color spaces that are used within the document. And then finally, we'll use Fiery Image Viewer to preview the document and to check for where that will, uh, any low-resolution images or other issues that we potentially may see before we actually produce the document. And then save this as a soft proof PDF then for our customer approval. So let's start with a pre-flight check before we print the job. Here we have a quick uh, review here. So first step is going to be to bring in the job. We'll drag and drop that into the held queue. We'll right click on the job. And we'll see the pre-flight tool is found by right clicking and selecting pre-flight under the pop-up menu. This tool is part of the Graphic Arts Package Premium Edition. The interface then will present us with all the elements that will be checked for this job. And here we can see that fonts will be checked, spot colors, image resolution, variable data printing resources, overprints, and hairlines. So we'll run the report, and then in a matter of seconds, we'll see the results that are available. In this case, we're going to come up, the report will show us then that we have three major, or three critical errors. The first is that there are missing fonts, and it identifies the page number. Page number one is where that font is found. We'll see that there are some spot colors that are missing. Again, we see two spot colors and the pages that those spot colors are found on. And then we'll also then see, we scroll down here, we can see that there's an image warning. And that's telling us that we have a low resolution image and it's found again on page one, which is the cover. And we really don't want that to happen. It may look pixelated when it's printed, so we'll want to identify that and make changes. We also identify a number of overprints that are within the document. But we know that the Fiery servers today process and produce transparencies and overprints correctly as the de designer intended. So this is not really a concern for us, just a reminder to turn on the composite overprint feature in the Fiery driver. After so many warnings, we may want to save this pre-flight report and have a PDF that we can exchange with our customer to help educate them for the next time when they send us this PDF file. We save the name, and then we can open up the, P the, the PDF file of this pre-flight and send this then to our customer. Again, the same errors that we saw previously are reported in this PDF report. All right, so next, after we run our pre-flight, let's next run a 
host flight report, and this tool will help us ensure the highest quality when we print this document so by identifying the color spaces used throughout the document. This will help ensure that we apply the correct color settings when we print this job. To do this, we'll begin with, again, opening the job and selecting job properties. In the job properties area, we'll go to the job info area and scroll to the bottom and find the post flight option. <clears throat> this report will now, by choosing these options, we have a number of choices, and we're going to choose all options, all components. This will then give us a comprehensive preview and list of all the, of the different elements in the job. We'll process the file here. And now we'll see, and we're going to process this and hold it since we can't see the printed output on our webinar. So we'll open this in Image Viewer. And <clears throat> we're going to start with then the first page, which is the post-flight report. The post-flight report is going to identify the different elements found. So we're going to see that, <clears throat> and this gives us the reference color coded for each job. If we go to page number two now, I'm sorry, it'll identify the CMYK objects as uh, cyan, RGB elements as red, and spot colors as yellow. And then on the second page, then we can see all the spot colors that were found on the page or throughout the document, I'm sorry. Spot colors that were not found in the RIPS color library then are identified with a gray, with an X through the box. All the other colors then actually have the spot color in the box next to the color name. So let's look at page number one now. And here we can see that the cover page has a graphic or an image that is a CMYK element as cyan. This may not be optimal since all the images should be sent to RGB in the source color profile in order to optimize the printer's color gamut. So we may want to report this back to our customer. As we go to subsequent pages, we see that there are RGB and spot color elements, spot color elements being identified as yellow throughout the page. All right, so now we can return. <clears throat> so now we've run our pre-flight report and our post-flight report. Now let's actually do a preview then of the document we did that before with the image viewer, but now we're going to go back and actually look at the actual file instead of the color-coded pages. So here we'll go back and we'll reprocess the job, and we'll turn off the post-light report and reprocess the job very quickly. The image viewer is also part of the Graphic Arts Package Premium Edition, and it's one of the most popular tools in this package. Image viewer is a soft proofing solution that allows you to proof to preview process files in their raster formats and to, get, to see exactly how the file is going to output. It's a plugin as part of Command Workstation and has a powerful zoom feature that lets you check on details and a way to edit the colors if necessary and have an immediate preview of how the color edits will affect the output. Here on page one, we can confirm the missing font that was reported in pre-flight. We can see that the title is a, obviously not the best font for this example. Then we'll use the pre-flight report <coughs> Also reported, or the, then the pre-flight report also reported a low-resolution image on page one. So we'll zoom in and look for it, until we, and we'll scroll around until we find that this flower image obviously looks pixelated here. It's over here on the right-hand side, and as we zoom in, we can very clearly see that it's pixelated. So we can use a feature called image smoothing then to resolve this. So we'll go back to the original job and right-click and select the properties. And we'll turn on an option called Image Smoothing that's found under the Image tab. So under Image tab, we'll select Image Smoothing, and we'll reprocess and hold this job. Once it's completed processing, we can open it up again in Image Viewer. Now, because we didn't previously close it, we can actually do a side-by-side -side comparison. So here we're going to open Image Viewer, and we'll expand it. And we'll then go down to the corner, and we can see that the quality now has been improved. It's much smoother. And we'll now do a side-by-side -side comparison with the original one. And we can see now how the old one was very pixelated, and the new one now is smooth. Once we've decided that these improvements are ready, we want to save this as a soft-proof PDF to ensure that the customer then approves this change before. So we'll save this as a PDF file. We could also print this sample, but with the, over, with the soft proof PDF file, we can email this directly to the customer much more efficiently. 
once the PDF file is exported, we can now go back and add additional comments then to the page to communicate exactly what the issues were that were found when we pr processed this file. We can save them these changes and then email it directly to our customer. All right, so just a quick summary here of what we just saw. That to ensure the highest quality when we print this document, we use three tools. We performed a pre-flight check that identified missing fonts, missing spot colors, and a low-resolution image. We used the post-flight tool to report and identify the color spaces used within each page of the document. We did this so we can ensure the highest quality print and using the correct color settings. And then finally, we used Image Viewer to identify a low-resolution image on the color cover and to verify this feature with, uh, that this is was improved using the image smoothing and then saved this out as a soft proof PDF that was sent then to our customer before production begins. All right, so next, let's look at how do we correct some of these issues that we discovered with our pre-flight, post-flight, and image viewer. So we'll come back without having to go back to the original file. So we'll start with some late stage edits, correcting the missing font replacing the spot colors with spot col with their Pantone equivalents that are installed on the Fiery server. And we can also look at a couple other edits that are available. And then we'll finish up then with an image enhancement where we off screen have identified that one of the images on the last pages really isn't exactly the best image. And we have a tool that then can help us resolve that. So let's start then with using late stage edits that we identified with our pre-flight. So to allow a user to fix and identify, uh, to fix issues identified with the pre-flight, Fiery Impose, Job Master, and Compose includes a single license of Adobe Acrobat and in focus pit stop edit. Here I've already opened the file using Job Master. By right-clicking on a page in it, I can now select Edit in Adobe Acrobat. This will open up Adobe Acrobat. <clears throat> By open, we, here we can see that the font that we identified earlier has actually been replaced. And so we're going to open up in focus pit stop edit tools and select and, in, and inspect some of the objects. And here we can select that font. And we'll see, in fact, that the font is there, but it is not embedded. What we need to do now is we need to embed this font. So we'll select another font and replace it. We're, in this case, selecting the exact same font. We're selecting embed. And when we hit apply here, now the font will respond back in the inspector tool as now being embedded. This will ensure that when we print the document that it prints correctly. Next, let's select and navigate through, and we can find then one of our missing Pantone or miss, missing spot colors. Here we're identifying the missing Pantone, and then we're going to remap it then with other Pantone colors and replace it with, in fact, the Pantone color that's the equivalent value. We select it and then replace it. We've done this now off stage again for the others. We save this file and then close the document. And the changes then are automatically applied to the job master window. And when we save the job master window, they're resaved. We'll rerun a pre-flight now. And the pre-flight report then will come back and identify that those issues that we previously had with the original file have been identified and resolved. So here we see that no fonts are missing. And the spot colors are no longer issuing or identifying any problems. All right, and again, that, so now we, once we've made those late stage edits now, let's take a look at image enhancements. Again, as I said, off stage, we identified that one of the images on the last page was not at the highest quality, and we want to use a feature called Image Enhance Visual Editor then to improve the quality on this. So to use the Image Enhance Visual Editor, we're going to select the job in the held queue, right click it, and choose enhance, in, Image Enhance Visual Editor. It will quickly process the job and automatically identify and analyze the images on each page. We can preview the images and make adjustments. So we're going to scroll here to the last page. We see that this image here is not the highest quality. And now we can use the automatic adjustments to see what kind of improvements can be made. The operator can also make manual adjustments by simply selecting one of the sliders. And the adjustments that are available are to tone, color, sharpness, and we even have a red eye convert option to correct red eye. So we'll go back and select our auto and turn on our red eye. And now we can look at the original and do a comparison jumping back to the preview, or we can do a split to do a side-by-side -side comparison as a before and after. Once we've made these changes, we can save this as a preset to apply it to other documents with similar challenges. 
once we've made saved the preset now, we can also apply this, these same settings then to other pages throughout the document, all the pages, or a single page or range of pages. This then gives us a great ability to apply the changes very quickly throughout documents that have these challenges. Once these challenges are made, or these changes are made, we can then quick do a quick soft proof. We can either print the current page or all pages, and then do a final hard copy verification. When we close the document, we'll be asked if we want to save these changes. By selecting yes now, the document is up, the document changes have been saved, and we're ready now to print the document. So in summary, we used Adobe Acrobat and InFocus Pit Stop Edit to make late stage edits to the document without the need to go back to the native document, saving time and production processes. We also used Image Enhanced Visual Editor to make an adjustment to one image in the document. We saw how to repeat the adjustments using the preset and apply them to other pages throughout the current document. We also how to save, saw how to save the changes from both InFocus Pit Stop and Acrobat, as well as Image Enhanced Visual Editor without having to re-import the, the document after the changes were made. These steps can be found on uh, a how-to guide called Enhance Image Quality of Pictures. So next, we'll, Ling will show us then how to complete the document assembly before printing the final job. Well, thank you, Chris. Um, so let's now move on to the imposition and assembly part of this customer order. The remaining challenges are the need to incorporate hard copy pages and inserts, the need for sections in the booklet. Uh, because this is a catalog and the uh, customer really wants a booklet rather than a binder, we think a saddle stitch booklet with bleed edge tabs is the best way to finish this 80-page document. Uh, because, you know, with just one face trim, um, bleed edge tab booklets look really polished and can retain its attractiveness even after repetitive use. And, uh, you know, unlike regular tab stocks where the tab years stick out, the tabs for bleed edge tabs are part of the pages. So, you know, you can flip them um, for many times and the tab years will remain uh, really well intact. Okay, the next challenge is heavy. Uh, heavy uh, cover stock, and also pages need to be renumbered. And also the customer requested to sign up the job before we start production. To resolve those challenges, we identified five steps for our pre-press process. One, create a booklet with scanned pages. Two, adjust page margins to accommodate the uh, bleed edge tab um, creation. And three, add new page numbers, four, create bleed edge tabs, and five, create soft proof. And the first part of this job assembly is to scan in the hard copy pages and then impose all the pages into a saddle stitch booklet. And we will also look at how we may automate the booklet imposition for future jobs. And here I right-click the file in the uh, hold queue to open the file in, using Fiery Jot Master. So let me pause here to kind of orient you in this application, just in case this is the first time that you're seeing uh, Fiery Jot Master. If you are familiar with Fiery Impose or Compose, you probably noticed that this is really the same interface um, as uh, those two applications. We designed, we designed this interface this way to minimize the learning curve for you. Another benefit of having the same interface is that you can move between these applications uh, pretty seamlessly. And this becomes very important for this type of booklet assembly where imposition is really part of the assembly. And there are three panels in this application. Left uh, page view is for viewing and editing at page level. And the sheet view is in the middle. It comes uh, in really handy for uh, previewing sheet layout after you apply imposition. And on the right-hand side is the document level property settings. And now we're ready to insert scan pages 
using Fire Remote Scan. So in your print shop, you can hook up Fire Remote Scan with any twin scanner you have available. For this demo, I have already scanned in the file and stored it in my mailbox. So I'm opening the file from the mailbox. And so using the scan uh, preview and edit window, we can here uh, apply the skew or the speckle to the pages and also make certain image edits on the pages. And for these two pages, I need to skew and apply the same change to page two. And I can um, also uh, you know, use the uh, page setting to ensure that the size is consistent with the rest of the document. So I'm going to import these two pages. And I have the flexibility of uh, drag and drop them into you know, the right place into this document. You know, uh, right here, we're going to make them page three and four. Now I'm ready to create a saddle stitch booklet. I can use an out-of-box uh, template called uh, uh, Two Up Settle. And here, landscape and duplex layout are applied automatically by the template. And I make the, uh, the sheet adjustment to the uh, really the large sheets I have here, 11 by 17. And next, I need to define the covers requested by the, uh, the customer. I select the heart cover media and also tell the application to put the, uh, the front cover on the outside and use both front and back of the last sheet for back cover. And notice here um, on the sheet view, uh, application is smart enough to insert a blank page after the front cover to achieve the correct layout. And here we can also see the benefit of having a main-ready application that is very well integrated with the engine. Because engine's paper catalog is available in Fiery uh, Dropmaster and Pose and Compose, it can easily define media on the per page or chapter basis, therefore improving the, uh, the media assignment across entire uh, production workflow. So now my booklet setup is done. I would like to reuse these settings for future customer saddle stitch uh, book orders. So I have these settings in new template, so I can save these settings in the new template. Um, and besides the media assignments, all in position settings are saved and ready for reuse. So in addition to using Fari and Pose template within the application uh, UI, as we see in, in this demo, we also have the options of using them with hot folder or virtual printers or presets. So for this part of the presentation, if you, if you want to familiarize yourself more with available tools and functions offered by Fari and Pose, Compose, and Jotmaster, here are really good two step-by-step um, -step how to guides for your reference. They are print a booklet to uh, prepare complex documents to print with Fiery Jotmaster. So the second part of this job assembly is to make sure the two scan pages have the right amount of margins when we um, are ready to add bleed edge tabs. So we first insert bleed edge tab from page uh, two to six to, um, to just do a, a simulation of what the, the, that's going to look like. And we'll use the preview to see whether margins need any adjustments. So we flip through these pages, and we can see that page two and three, no, three and four here need some adjustment. I think specifically the page two margin needs to shift to the right, and on page three margin needs to shift to the left. So let me cancel out the, this bleed edge tab and make those adjustments. And so let's pause here. So because let me just explain uh, how this works. So because you know tab uh, in on page two and page three they're really on the opposite side. So their margin adjustment need to be done separately. So if you have a document, for example, where you need to shift margin for multiple pages, 
to accommodate, uh, say, a spiral binding finish, uh, like we saw in our last webinar, you can multi-select, uh, say, all even pages to shift the margin uniformly to one side, and then select the odd pages to shift the margin uniformly to the other side. So then here for page two, I have opened the uh, the edit page and use the I'm going to use the size and offset mode to shift the trim box. And by changing the left margin just uh, as negative 0.2 inch, I effectively move the content to the right by 0.2 inch. So, so next, I will use the edit page to shift the content on page 3 to the left by 0.2 inch. And as you see, the same settings are applied. And to verify if uh, the same, the right margin is freed up for bleed edge tab, um, I can insert the bleed tab again for those pages and flip them, flip through as we did earlier. Uh, to just see the preview. Two and three and yeah, so right here I think the it's um, the the right amount of margin adjustment is, is put in and both scan pages uh, really look very consistently with the rest of the pages. So then this document will have a much more consistent look and feel. So before I can create the bleed edge tab for this job, uh, in this next step, I want to make sure that all pages in this booklet have the correct page numbering. This is needed because uh, we just inserted the two scan pages, and now the page numbers are no longer in the right sequence. So to do that, I first need to mask out the uh, existing page numbers. And I can do this by selecting all the pages and use the mask function. And using preview, we can see that scan pages um, do not have page numbers. So this is the original page, page one. And when we go to page two, uh, three, and four, yeah, the page numbers are not there. So now let me mask out the page number on page one here. So by masking out this little area, um, it actually masks the same area on all my pages in this stack of uh, um, uh, documents. And the, then I can preview the results um, and everything looks good. And next, I will use the edit numbering function to add new page numbers for my selected pages. So Fire Job Master offers a variety of macros for you um, to fit the stamping or paging needs. And the text box here is also editable. And um, so I'm just going to make sure the font size is good and uh, also name it page law is uh, what my customer specified, and place that page uh, number in the center of the uh, bottom of the sheet, um, like the original document has. And going through a preview to make sure they look consistent across pages. And uh, everything looks good, and now I'm uh, good with the new page numbers and ready for the next step. So finally, we are ready to do the last part of this job assembly, adding bleed edge tabs. So to start with the bleed edge tab creation, I will open the edit uh, bleed edge tab under actions and put in the sections that I want to have for them. And here I can do a very quick preview to see how tabs will be laid out in the uh, um, in the booklet. And now I'm ready to put in the text for the first section with proper font. And I can also use, let's see, let's finish the font. 
And then I can also add image to the, uh, the tab section. Here I have um, these images already from the designer. And the visual preview can help me stretch that image uh, to the right size. Everything looks good. And to help me ex expedite the rest of my section uh, setup with bleeded tabs, I can use this apply all function to, um, so I don't have to re, you know, set all the forms um, and, and also ensure the consistent look and feel for the rest of them. So let me, let me kind of fast forward to some, to the rest of the steps because they are kind of re repetitive. And with Bleed Edge tab set up, um, I will do a final preview of these, uh, these pages section by section to see the final result. Everything looks good. And that wraps up my tab creation. So we have two step-by-step -step guides um, for this part, the job assembly, bleed edge tabs, and multibank tabs. The first one covers uh, bleed edge tab setup I just demoed. Uh, so if a, if a job requires a simple, single bank of tabs, you have the option of bleed edge tabs or regular tabs. But if a job such as a, like a training manual requires multiple banks of tabs in a document, you can use uh, Job Master to create chapters and sub-chapters kind of structure in a document with regular tab stocks. So the second how-to guide will walk you through that process. And now with all the assembly completed for this job, uh, this job is ready for approval and printing. And this customer order has um, requested for a soft proof before production. So let me save the job as a PDF file before, um, uh, before, uh, so that we can send it to the customer electronically for review and approval. And to do this, do this um, I just save it as a flattened PDF file and, and give it a name, proof. Yep. Okay. So as uh, best practice, uh, we also want to save this file as a DDP file. And this is the file format um, that can keep all the assemblies, such as uh, page numbers and tabs that I have um, added to, the, to this job as sort of layers. So next time, you know, if the customer comes back that, to ask more, for more changes, I can do that very easily. Very good. Now it's merging all the elements into that file. So to summarize, use PDF for soft proof and use the dot dbp file for edits. And that wraps up of our order number one. And here's a list of how-to guides we covered. Thank you for watching. For additional resources and e-learning classes on this topic, visit our website. To see all recorded sessions and register for upcoming World of Fiery webinars, please visit efi.com forward slash WOF webinars.